Hello. I know I look a little ridiculous right now. However, if you are familiar with the troubled teen industry, WASP, which stands for Worldwide Association of Specialty Programs, NASAP, which stands for National Association of Therapeutic Schools and Programs. If you're a survivor of this industry, you might understand that it is dangerous and that taking precautions when speaking out can be smart. So hence the get up today. And I'm gonna be speaking specifically about my experience in the seminars at Spring Ridge Academy, a therapeutic boarding school in Arizona. At Spring Ridge, they call the seminars trainings. And I want to say, if you are a parent and you're thinking about sending your kid to SRA, Spring Ridge Academy, please watch this video. Please, because these are the things they will not tell you when they're trying to sell the program to you. Seminars are the backbone of WASP-associated schools and programs. These seminars are known for being intensely intimidating, inciting confusion and terror in kids, and the kids in these programs are forced to go through the seminars if they ever want to leave the program. The Breaking Code Silence movement has defined the word forced as if you don't comply with this one thing, there is a real or perceived threat of being harmed physically, emotionally, psychologically, or being harmed by losing privileges in your program and not being able to get through because you're stuck there. And there's a real threat of having to stay longer if you don't make it through these seminars. So first, I would like to say that none of the exercises in these three to four day long trainings, none of it is evidence-based. None of the facilitators have adequate training in mental health and trauma. However, at Spring Ridge Academy, these trainings are presented as a type of therapy in the context of a therapeutic boarding school, and they are essential to leaving the program. So a commonality right off the bat of seminars across WASP associated programs is that participants entering the seminars always enter to the theme to 2001, A Space Odyssey. Upon entering, the facilitator forces all of the kids to vow secrecy that you will not speak about what happens inside this room to anyone who has not been through and that includes your parents. And so right off the bat, there is fear, intimidation. You're not able to leave, but you're also scared to be kicked out. You have to ask permission for basic needs like going to the bathroom, getting water. There are humiliation tactics, being publicly judged and criticized in front of the room, not knowing what will happen and not being able to consent to what happens in those rooms because all of the power and knowledge of what's going to happen is in the facilitator's hands. And I should also note that the facilitator has a team of staffers, which are all of the kids who have already made it through this training, come back as staffers and help facilitate these exercises to the kids who haven't been through yet. Before I explain what the exercises for the different trainings are, 
I also want to note that there is intimidation from peers to participants that is directed by the facilitator. We are made to intimidate each other. Additionally, all of the senses are leveraged for manipulation. There is loud music, there's screaming, there are either bright lights or total darkness, the temperature in the rooms is always cold. As soon as you walk in the room, you see posters plastered all over the wall with essentially propaganda all over them. And then you have no information about what's happening other than what the facilitator is saying. And science shows that senses get altered when you are stressed and tired. So kids are forced to be in this room all day long. And then there is hours of homework after the seminar assigned by the facilitator. So you're sleep deprived, stressed, scared. At Spring Ridge Academy, they call the first training challenge. So some of the exercises in challenge include what's called the nine dot game, where participants are made to make a nine dotted box and have to figure out how to make the line in a certain way. It's, it's a metaphor for going out of the box, but during this, facilitator directs the staffers to go and hover over the participants and intimidate them. And then afterward, how each participant approached the nine dot game is intensely criticized and shamed and analyzed. Then there is a trust game where participants have to go up to each other and either say I trust you or I don't trust you. There are also circles of kid staffers and kid participants where they have to give each other feedback which is code for critiquing and attacking each other and it's painted as therapy. I'd say the peak of challenge is the chair beating exercise when kids are forced into a dark room and the facilitator prompts them by getting them angry with their parents and leads them in a guided visualization to get all emotional and then says, under your chair, you will find something. And everyone reaches under their chair and there's a towel wrapped in duct tape. And for the next 20 minutes, the facilitator shouts into the microphone saying, beat the chair harder. And kids have to hit the chair until they are literally collapsing. Everyone is heaving, sobbing in a dark room. At the end of the training, it's ended on a high note to create the euphoria of being built back up after being torn down and attacked. You give everyone compliments and you stick these colored dots on people's bodies. Oh, there's also an exercise called stop, look, do it, step left, where participants go up to each other and have to decide the type of interaction they want to have. It's a level of physical touch, and then you shift to the next person. And this saying, there's evidence, this saying has been written on the walls of isolation rooms across various facilities. So you can see how these concepts are used as punishment. Spring Ridge Academy, the next level of training for kids who are farther along in the program, they call it action. Action starts by having to make a name tag. So getting up in front of everyone and having to label yourself as the very worst thing you think you are. And then for the next four days, you have to wear that on your chest. One of the highlights is the lifeboat exercise, which is a death simulation. You're led through a very relaxing guided meditation. You're on a boat. Also, you're in a dark room. Facilitator says you drift into a 
You drift deep into sleep, and all of a sudden, every single staffer screams at the top of their lungs. Then, on the microphone, the facilitator says, and the boat is sinking, the boat's sinking, and there's only one lifeboat, and you have to fight for your life, and every person has to get up for a whole minute and talk about why they deserve to live and why they deserve to be on the lifeboat. And if you don't do an adequate job, then you're kicked out of the training. Which leads into the death simulation. Without knowing what's happening, kids are taken by the shoulders by the staffers and led around to each one of their friends where you have to look people in the eye and say, you die, you die, you die. I will never forget having to tell all of my best friends in that place to die and being told that I die too. There's also an exercise called giver and taker, which is where every participant has to stand up on a chair in front of the whole room and every single person in the room votes on whether they think that person is a giver or a taker. The facilitator votes as well and so do the therapists and program staff in the room. And if you get too many taker votes, you get kicked out of the training. Then there are the contracts that kids are forced to make to themselves. So it's standing up in front of everyone and announcing, I am a blank blank young woman, not to mention not everyone identifies as a woman. I am a blank blank young woman who blank blank to represent the authentic statement about who we really are. And again, if you're not convincing or confident enough, you're asked to leave. And if this contract is approved by the facilitator, the student gets on the chair, uh, a song from Rocky plays, everyone chants, rip it up, rip it up, while the student tears up the old name tag of the worst thing they think about themselves, run to the back of the room, escorted by the staffers, write the contract on a piece of paper, and then it gets stuck on the wall next to all the training propaganda posters. The climax of the action training which also happens across the board at different WASP facilities are what's called stretches. Up to this point, staffers and facilitator have been privately discussing each participant and their trauma to find the perfect song and character to represent them. Each participant is assigned a stretch, but it's very vague and confusing what people will have to do. They get assigned a character and a song. The staffers help people get in full costume, full makeup. Many people are forced to wear leotards, even if they are uncomfortable with their body and that type of outfit. People are forced to wear dresses, other revealing outfits against their will. And then the room is set up in a horseshoe. And so one at a time, each participant goes up and is forced to dance when their song comes on and the staff are screaming and cheering, waving flashlights, and a, the goal is to have a breakthrough, to let, let go and be free during this humiliating dance. And if there isn't a breakthrough, the person is asked to leave. After a successful stretch is what's called the cradle, which is where, without knowing what's going on, the kid who just did their stretch is picked up by every staffer picked up and rocked back and forth for the length of an entire song while the kid just lays there. The next day is graduation. So it's supposed to be a celebration day. And at Spring Ridge Academy, all the participants who've made it to this point are blindfolded, led down the hallway and through this doorway where I will never forget being blindfolded and feeling all of these hands all over my body because people were caressing me as I entered. I knew I was in a dark room, I had my blindfold on, and then people started massaging me, and everyone was getting massaged without consent in a dark room blindfolded. When we were instructed to remove our blindfolds, you see the staffers in a tight formation in the center of the circle holding candles like statues, and the only one that's lit is in the middle. And so then the flame gets passed around. It's supposed to be very symbolic, like be the light, share the light. And when the lights come on, 
you realize that the room is full of people. It's full of this program staff, therapists, everyone who has already made it through the training has been watching this whole dark room massage and candle passing ceremony. And then there's a big dance party where everyone does their stretches. And once you've made it through action at Spring Ridge Academy, it's like you have officially been initiated because the campus is covered in what's called graduation paintings. Every student, when they graduate, they have to make a painting. And there's all this hidden symbolism in the paintings that you only understand once you've made it through action. In recent years, there has been the resurgence of another training called Commitment. The structure of Commitment is different because instead of being an intensive over the course of three or four days, like Challenge and Action, Commitment is about over six weeks. During Commitment, we were forced to carry five pound sandbags with us everywhere we went, no exceptions, for over a month to represent the weight of our negative beliefs. We were blindfolded and led into a room where our friends had memorized our worst beliefs about ourselves. And when our blindfolds were removed, our friends were instructed to yell our biggest insecurities at us. And we are yelled at by five or six different people. And then we have to be the yellers. We are also blindfolded and driven out into the desert at night after a day of silence, not knowing where we are being taken by staff. We are pushed into the desert road in the dead of night and the sandbag we've been carrying for over a month. The person in charge, the facilitator, cuts a little slit in it and says, go, walk. And it's supposed to be symbolic, like we're walking down this desert road, letting go of all the weight we've been carrying. What I've come to understand about these seminars and these programs overall is that they approach behavior modification through intense intimidation, confusion, and terror at best. In the program, you are praised for how well you can withstand being torn down. How well can you mask your terror? How well can you trick yourself into believing this is what healing feels like? Thank you to everyone who is speaking up about the troubled teen industry. We see you, programs. We see you. Thank you.